technical analysis is one of the most important tools that I use as a full-time trader in the stock market. If you want to learn how I set up my Thinkorswim app to look like this, then stay tuned. Hi all, my name is Greg and I make videos about the stock market and options trading. And today I'm going to be showing you how I set up my Thinkorswim app. So I'm going to be taking you through the entire process, how to make this look pretty and how to add all the studies that I have on my charts. That way you can add all this to your trading toolbox. So with that out of the way, let's get right into it. To set up Thinkorswim like I have here, first of all you're going to have to download the app. But before we do that, you actually have to sign up for TD Ameritrade. So you're going to sign up with one of their accounts by Googling TD Ameritrade and opening a new account. And then whatever type of account you want to open, it's going to be up to you. But for most people, I would just recommend an individual account. So once we open an individual account, we're going to have to type in all this personal information. And I don't feel like doxing myself. Uh, so we're just going to skip this step. And then we're going to download Thinkorswim. So in order to download Thinkorswim, you're going to have to type in Thinkorswim on Google. Go figure, right? Google is a great resource. And all we have to do here is just click this download button. I already have it downloaded, so I don't need to go through this entire process. Uh, but essentially, you're going to be taking through this installation wizard, and I'm pretty sure you can figure it out. And trust me, this isn't malware. This isn't something that's going to crash your computer or anything like that. If it's on TD Ameritrade's official website, this is legitimate. So once you have Thinkorswim finally downloaded onto your computer, then we're going to open the app right here. It takes a little bit to load. And then you're just going to type in your credentials. I'm not going to expose mine, so we're just going to log in. And once you've logged into Thinkorswim for the very first time, this is what you're going to be greeted with. This is the home screen for Thinkorswim, at least on a desktop. So in order to pull up the charts, what we want to see, we're going to have to click on charts right here in this top menu, then just click on that and type in any ticker symbol you want. We're going to use trusty old SPY because why not? So you'll notice that this looks nothing like the chart that I first showed you whenever I introduced this video. So we're going to make it look all pretty and then we're going to add all the studies that I use as a full-time trader. First off, we're going to start in styles right here. Okay and we're going to go to settings style settings and then we're going to overlap volume because i don't like volume taking up more space than it needs to i don't need to know the exact volume i just need to know if it's going up or if it's going down so we're going to overlap our volume and that's going to be put on top of this chart right here the price chart so this right here is going to move up and then I'm also going to extend the time axis. So what I like to do is I like to make different drawings and it helps to have a little bit of space to the right side of my screen. That way I can tell where it might end up going, maybe within the next week, within the next month or whatever time frame I'm looking at. So I like to set my expansion area under the time axis to around 50 bars to the right. And I find this to be extremely helpful whenever I'm trying to predict the future. Now, I'm not that so raven. I can't see the future, but I can predict where it might end up going. That's how I set up the styles on my chart, and it's pretty basic. But uh, we can actually save the style, so every time we log into Thinkorswim, we're going to be greeted with this same style. So I'm going to save it as Greg Talks Money Style. And... Voila. Now, whenever I open Thinkorswim and maybe for some reason um, I don't have this style in place, all I have to do is go here, load style, and then Greg Talks Money style. Simple as that. And now the next thing that we're going to do and what I find to be incredibly important whenever it comes to price analysis is make our studies. So we're going to studies right here in the top right corner. We're going to edit studies and there's... I think five main studies that I personally like to use. First of all is going to be RSI. So this is relative strength index and I'll explain it later. But essentially what this does is this gives you the relative strength index of the stock and it kind of gives you a direction on which way the stock might go. I'm probably going to be making an entire series covering all of the different studies that I personally use and all the ones that I find to be important. So if you actually want to see that, leave like 100 likes on this video and I'll make that a thing. But anyway, we added RSI. Now we're going to add MACD. So a lot of people use this study as well. And 
This kind of gives you the general direction for which way a stock is heading based on the time frames that you have selected. So those are the two lower studies that I personally use. I also like to use price studies. What I use in price studies is moving average line. So I like to use a simple moving average line, which is simple moving app. And then I also like to use an exponential moving average line, which is under MOV AV exponential. I don't know why they titled it that way, but that's just the cards that were dealt with. Another study that you might want to use whenever it comes to price is the volume weighted average line or VWAP. So this gives you the volume weighted average line as the name suggests, and then it gives you two standard deviations away from the mean. And typically stocks will go away from their mean and then over time, they'll come back to it. That's just kind of the laws of nature. And that even applies to the stock market. So we're going to add that as well. And this is all of the studies that I personally use. So in future videos, I'm going to be covering these in detail. But for now, we're just going to click OK. And now I want to fix the time frame setups. So right now, we have the default time frames, which is one year, one day. We have one day, one minute. 5 day, 5 minute, 5 day, 15 minute, you can read through the rest of them. Uh, but personally, there's a few that are missing here for me. And the ones that I personally like to use that aren't included in this is a 2 day and 5 minute chart for one. And to add this, we're going to have to click add time frame. And then we're going to go to intraday and we're going to set our time interval to 2 days and our aggregation period to 5 minutes. So if a stock has been trending for the last couple of days or so, this will be the most important time frame that you can use in order to determine where it might go over the next couple of days. So we're going to add this and then we're going to move this up so it makes sense and it's aligned with the rest of these since it's one day, two day, five day, 10 day, 20 day, etc. And then I also like to use a 20 year and one quarter chart. And this is mainly for like long term investments and to get a general sense on where a stock has been heading over the past couple of decades. Now, a lot of the stocks that I've been watching, at least, haven't even been around for 20 years. But you know, you also have stocks like Amazon, you have stocks, maybe Apple has been around for 20 years. So there are some stocks that this actually makes sense with. So we're going to add another time frame. And then we're going to go to daily. And then our time interval is going to be 20 years in our aggregation period. We're going to set this to quarterly. So you have a 20 year time interval and a one quarter aggregation period. So this should give you 80 candles in total if the stock has been around for 20 years. And it judges the price action based on each quarter over those past 20 years. So we're going to add this. We're going to click OK. Everything lines up over here. And there we are. Um, so this is actually a style and you can save this again if you'd like. And I'm just going to put Greg Talks Money style again. Um, and then finally, we also need to save our study set. And I'm not sure if I did that earlier. So we're going to go right here and we're going to talk Greg Talks Money study set. And you, of course, you can call this whatever you want, whatever your name is or you can just call it ABC. Give it a name, save it, that way you can come back to it whenever you reopen Thinkorswim. Now, the final thing that I wanna change is gonna be the left side of my screen. So first of all, I wanna extend this because it's not big enough for my taste. And then what I'm gonna do, I don't like to watch Trader TV, so either we can minimize that or we can just delete this gadget altogether. In order to delete any of the gadgets over on the left hand side, all you have to do is click this menu button right here and then delete. Simple as that. Uh, another one you might want to delete is the quick chart. I rarely use this, but you can use it in some situations if maybe you want to keep track of two stocks at one time. But also in order to do that, you could also just put um, on the grid, you could put up two stock charts, you could put up four or however many you like if you have a huge setup, then you might actually find this to be useful. But personally, I just like to use one stock at a time. And if I want to scroll through them really fast, all I have to do is click the symbol button, make it red, make the chart red up here as well. 
and then link this to red. This is going to be the news that comes out about these different stocks. So we're going to link the news to red too. That way, whenever we scroll through our watch list, we can see the news on different stocks. And then we can also see the chart over on the right hand side if it ever decides to load. So that's actually not a real stock. Uh, but this next one is and you can see that it loaded it up the chart on the right and then the news on the left over here. And then what I want to focus on next is the watch list itself. So whenever it comes to the watch list itself, I don't like to use these default values that it shows me. I find the bid ask over here to be incredibly redundant since you can just find it up here right next to the stock name, the price, the percent gain, and then bid ask is right here. So in order to change this, what we're going to do is go to customize. And then we're just going to delete these two because we don't need them. And then I'm also going to get rid of net change because instead of net change, I actually like to focus on percent change. So in order to do that, we're going to remove that. And then we're going to put percent change over to the right. And finally, the last thing that I like to include in my watch list over on the left hand side is going to be volume. And this is important because you need to keep track of volume just to see how a stock is trending. And if it gets more volume added to it each and every day, then that trend could just continue and go crazy. So if a stock is climbing up and it sees more and more volume on the buying side, then you're going to get that stock moving up more and more and more. And this is how you might be able to find stocks that are going to soar up hundreds of percents, just like we saw with BNGO. There was a couple of days where it was kind of doing a whole lot of nothing in terms of volume. And then there's one big day where the volume just popped off out of nowhere and their stock entered up getting sent up a thousand percent in the next week which was insane now i'm not saying that you're going to see this with every single stock but whenever it comes to stocks like bngo which was once just a 100 million dollar company or so maybe 200 million dollars whenever there's a lot of volume on that stock generally it's going to go up even further the more volume that they see because you're creating a lot of demand for a company that doesn't have a lot of value yet now their company is valued at around $3 billion, which is a 15x return if you ended up buying in early. So that's where volume can be incredibly important. And I think we have everything set up over on our watch list. This looks about right. And the last thing that I want to do is minimize this quick chart. And then we're going to drag this down. That way we can see our entire watch list. So this isn't actually my watch list that I'm watching right now. I have a few watch lists over here, including the current options I own. You can also put options on your watch list, which you can see right here, denoted by a period, the ticker symbol, the date, and then whether it be a call or a put, and then the strike price. And then I'm watching AMD, Twitter, Nikola, and Tesla because these are the current stocks that I have options on right now. I also have a personal watch list for my long-term portfolio so I can keep track of all the stocks that I have that I'm investing in for the long term. And I also have a weekly watch list that I update every single week over on my Discord. This week in particular, I'm watching Tesla, Facebook, Google, in AMD. If you want to know what stocks I'm watching every single week, and if you want to know what trades I'm making every single day, I post every single trade that I make over on my Discord, which can be found linked in the pinned comment below. Make sure to go join it. It's super informative. There's almost 2,000 other traders in there, so you can get some ideas about the market, and hopefully you can make some gains with us. So that's pretty much all I got for you today. Thanks for tuning in all the way to the end of this video, and thank you to all my patrons for your support. Thank you to everybody subscribed to the channel for all the love that you've given me over the past few weeks. And as always, remember to stay positive, stay green. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye, guys.